Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. And I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to punch, chop, and kick your way through the greatest era of action movies. We're going to have to change that tagline because we are here at the end of season two of the movies podcast. I know you probably trips people up sometimes to say the end of a season. They think it's the season of Miami Vice. No, no. We have finished our second season of movies as we transition over to action movies. And I think as this season was all about the greatest karate city for our next season, we're going to have to take out that punch, chop, and kick maybe because who knows what we're going to pick. I'm thinking Lifetime <laughs> Christmas movies. Hallmark. Hallmark. <laughs> I married my horse. <laughs> You know, I'm really nervous because we moved to this little mountain town that some hunk is going <laughs> to, some farm hunk is going to come steal my woman. <laughs> That's what it is, right? Farm boy and a city girl, like, and he woos her because he rides over on his horse. And she's like, I've never seen a man ride a horse before. Like, little little do these movies know that in rural parts of the country, they don't ride horses around and pick up women. They're too busy riding their golf carts all over the place. Yeah, or their buggies. They're, they're or like, like camo <laughs> yeah, exactly. golf carts. Well, as I mentioned, we are here at the end of season two of the movies podcast. The theme for this season was the greatest city, the greatest karate city. And we picked eight movies and we squeezed in some of the ones that were in there because, you know, we extended the season out. I'm going to go back in time, talk about when the season started. We recorded at the end of February of this year. We announced what our theme was going to be. We picked our slate of movies. That episode came out like middle of March and man, the world just went upside down <laughs> right after yeah. that. I have to say of the ones where we went off the theme, my my favorite of them was probably Chud because that was like totally unexpected. I had we had seen yes. Net Never Too Young to Die before, so that was like just recapping like what we had seen. But Chud Chud was probably the most fun of the other movies. That and I'm still waiting for like a sixth Mythica. I think it's coming. <laughs> Don't worry. They're going to pump out like five more at a time. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So just to recap what movies there were in this season, because this is our final rundown, our recap of everything. We have some categories on that that we picked for how we're going to recap this series. Sorry, I'm going to go talk about those first. We're going to talk about who the best sidekick was, the best villain, the biggest badass, and then, of course, the best karate city. So those are the four topics that we're going to debate in this final episode of the season before we take our extended break. Recap on the movies that were part of this season. We started way back in April with No Retreat, No Surrender. Then Blood Fist, then Blood Sport, The Last Dragon, Angel Town, Lone Wolf McQuaid, and Miami Connection. So those were the movies that were in this season. And as I look through did this, you miss like Deadly Bet there. Oh, oh I, yeah, did I did miss Deadly Bet. Sorry, Deadly Bet. This could be the last time we're going to talk about you. <laughs> I was totally not on purpose. <laughs> Funny, because that comes up a lot. We're all, I'm always like looking through the season. Like, what movie's this? What movie's that? So preparing for my notes, stuff like that. And I prepared all my notes. And Melissa was like, what about this from Deadly Bet? I'm like, oh, yeah. That's right. We watched, <laughs> we that, watched that one, didn't we? <laughs> that's right. That was that w Jeff Wincott movie. <laughs> Where he, he watched fights that were better than his. <laughs> you know, I'm looking through the list again, and I, I said Chud was my favorite off the beaten path, like off the season movie. I'm, I think maybe Red Surf I actually. I knew you was were going to say Red that. Red Surf was better. That was not a good movie. <laughs> it was a terrible movie. But it had Deadly George was better than that. <laughs> it had jet skis, like jets <laughs> on literal skis. <laughs> The only good part about that movie was when George Clooney got burnt to a crispy, <laughs> like a marshmallow toasted. And he was like, just, just a skeleton on his crispy. chest. You know? But did they ever make it to Portland? No. <laughs> well, because as you know, that's where you detox is in Oregon. <laughs> she was going to go have a baby. Not where they detox. don't trust you to yeah. pump your own gas. <laughs> No, see, see, if, if people around the country keep, are wondering what's wrong with Portland, that's why. That's where people go <laughs> when they want to. When you're running from drug dealers and yeah. All right, well, let's dive into it. Let's talk about our four topics. Like I mentioned, the things we're going to talk about are, are the best sidekick, the best villain, biggest badass, and the best karate cities. A recap this season. We have our we have our movie slate. We have our topics. And the first one we're going to talk about, because we're, we're going to talk about level of importance here. So we're going to start with the 
best sidekick. And I wish, I really wish that Never Too Young to Die was one of our movies from the season because I would absolutely choose Stargrove's best friend as being the best sidekick. <laughs> He's a badass, and he's not even supposed to be a badass. He's just supposed <laughs> to be a teenager that wears goofy clothes. <laughs> when I was pulling the pictures well, for that, is... get, getting ready to talk about that movie on social media and stuff like that, I realized his costume, when he has that grenade launcher, it looks just like a, like a modern Robin mm-hmm. costume. Yeah. Now, it's totally on purpose that he was supposed to be Robin to Stargrove's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there are plenty of choices from the season. Like, I almost chose the war vet from Angel Town, climbed over a fence and helped defend the porch. Like, I almost chose him. So it was close. <laughs> My choice, and I'll, I'll defend this, that the best sidekick, not just in these action movies, but maybe all of karate movies the greatest sidekick ever is the ghost of bruce lee which is better than the real bruce lee (laughs) (laughs) the ghost of bruce lee is the best sidekick from this season because and i know jason from no retreat no surrender he has a friend who's popping and locking is able to win that dance contest or whatever the hell's happening (laughs) in that club but the ghost of bruce lee is what actually teaches him to be so good at karate that he even though he gets destroyed in la karate he comes and destroys seattle karate and then destroys new york karate at the very end of the movie (laughs) including he's able to beat jcvd who had to, who defeats someone who's a gold medalist yeah. fighter mm-hmm. earlier that night? Yeah. So all those people, <laughs> all those people had like belts and awards and everything. He defeated all of them, but Jason because he had the ghost of Bruce Lee's brother. <laughs> 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 actually more like distant cousin because <laughs> he never actually said his name was bruce lee i think his name was like chuck lee and he just like showed up <laughs> he showed up taught him a couple things pretended like he was bruce <laughs> my other favorite part about the ghost of bruce lee is that he doesn't just teach him how to fight but he teaches him to stop being such a whiny little bitch he too beats the crap out of him <laughs> <laughs> your your ghost even smacks the crap out of you. Your imaginary friend is beating the crap out of you for fun, basically. <laughs> well, I'm going to go next. I went with J.W. Fails, who plays R.J. Madison. R.J., because yes. he... He, he talked his way into the movie for a role that requires him to be able to skateboard and dance, and he can do neither. And he talked his way into it. That is that is why he is my favorite sidekick. Yeah, because he had no business being there, but he just made himself. <laughs> just worked his way into that movie. By the way, JW Fails, if you're out there, we want to hear from you. We want to yeah, make sure I, everything's okay. Yeah. Like, if you haven't heard from Wait, you. Where are you? <laughs> Mine is going to be, I can guarantee to you it's probably the only pick from deadly bet <laughs> and technically he was not really a sidekick he actually was supposed to be against <laughs> against him and he was the loan shark the greek because for whatever reason he, he just kept giving that guy chances he saw something in his eyes that he just couldn't he couldn't stop helping him he kept giving him chances just after chances him. Yeah, he, like, I'm going to give you money. Hey, you know what? Go, go do this tournament. Even though you have no business being in it and you're not as good as those other fighters, I'll put on and I'll give you the money. I'll split the money with you, even though you owe me like $100,000. <laughs> the loan shark with a heart of gold. Exactly. And a, and a fake ponytail. He's great because <laughs> at the final fight, it's like, listen, just go win. I got your back. Yeah. My crew is going to be out there to prevent you from being killed by the person that put together yeah. this fight. By the way, my crew is this one fat Italian it's just guy. This one guy who gets <laughs> obliterated like within minutes of seeing the other guys. Okay, that's it. He's gone. Oh, yes. crap. It didn't work. <laughs> He's also the worst loan shark that's ever been to. <laughs> In a movie full of people that are the worst at their jobs. <laughs> <It's> so terrible. <laughs> there are so many sidekicks to choose from because it was also really tempting to pick just someone from Dragon Sound. Uh, I was tempted to pick oh, yeah. the, the um, what's his name? Baby from Blood Fist because like he got him laid <laughs> <laughs> with his sister even. <laughs> He got, he got hooked up. She's so flexible. She was so flexible. She danced on the roof. He found her. He, he found a girl to sleep with, like within minutes of being in Thailand. 
See, I was also thinking about Blood Fist, but I was thinking about his partner from America who shows oh, yeah. up like halfway through the movie. And saves him. Yeah. <laughs> He's from, I saw him in Modesto. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm going to move on to best villain. And my choice for best villain is Quag and his magic mango. <laughs> So yes. man peeled it like a freaking banana. <laughs> <laughs> How did he do that? <laughs> I'm going to prove my case here on why he's the best villain. Because he doesn't just poison people. He kills other fighters on the street with his ninja skills too, right? Yeah, he can fight, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's able to do that. And he's also able to do the poisoning. And he's the most villainous of all because he becomes your friend and slowly works his way into you tr fully trusting him. Then at the very end, the knife in the back. He, and he's all about revenge, yeah. too. He's got to, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. he's got to avenge his own brother. Yes. And it's everything that you would think of of someone who's from Modesto. <laughs> it's all the stuff that they're capable of. <laughs> yes. Don't trust anyone from Modesto or Stockton <laughs> either. No, <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> Oh, well, Stockton will rob you. He's just so evil because he, he does that. He gets in, he become he befriends him, he trains him, mm -hmm. he gets him in a fight, he trains him so well, he gets him all the way to the final bout too, and that's when he finally flips his plan his plan into action. So he's he's dirty. He's sneaky. Uh, he's dirty. And, and I'm with you, Tom. I almost went for him, but I had to go with Bolo Young. The guy's just born to be a bad guy. I mean, he just has that look. He's just born. He was a bad guy in like three other movies. <laughs> yeah. And a certified he's, badass. He's a, yeah, and a certified badass and a bodybuilding champion. And I'm pretty sure he could probably kick JCVD's ass. So I'm just throwing <laughs> it out there. Well, that slides right into my villain. <laughs> <laughs> I picked JCVD from No Retreat, No Surrender because he kicked everyone's ass wearing blush. And he, ne <laughs> and, and he never said more than five words in the entire movie, but he still broke Jason's dad's leg within five seconds of being in the movie. <laughs> He's a villain in the movie. And in real life, because everyone's like, he just punched me for real. <laughs> yeah. Also, when you read about how, uh, like, behind the scenes, everyone was like, he was hurting me. The guy that played Jason was like, he hurt me. I didn't like it. And he cried about it after. That's why he never made more movies. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Stop acting. I'm worried. I'm worried the and other then, guest star is going to beat me up. Exactly. And then after they stopped filming, he asked them all to help him push his car down the road. <laughs> You have to be a real supervillain to punch somebody repeatedly, <laughs> even though they don't want to be to punched. To really in hurt real his life. leg. Yeah. To really hurt that guy's leg. <laughs> I mean, he did. He did accidentally <laughs> take someone's eye out one time. So I'm thinking maybe he's a real villain. <laughs> I'm, <Yeah>. saying. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love you. I'm joking. I'm joking. Sean Claude, if you're listening, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Chong Lee could probably kick your ass. <laughs> All right, well, this is probably going to be up for a debate because we're going to talk about the best badass. And we've had people in this season that are certified badasses. They won Olympic medals. They're multiple-time world champions in whatever their fight skill is, taekwondo, kickboxing, karate, whatever it is they are. They're some real, legit badasses. And one that we can't pick because he's hardly in the movie is Billy Blanks. Although I would love to pick Billy Blanks for being the <laughs> biggest badass in all the movies right. that we have. He wasn't even given speaking lines, though. So. That's Black Rose. He won't talk anymore. <laughs> That's the end of it. He got the napalm. No, I'm just <laughs> I mean, I wish I could give it to him, but just that one scene where he sees him training outside, he, he, just looks, he looks over the, the <laughs> railing from the building, just shakes his head at him. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my my order will always go to him because he's able to get off five shots and hit five times while running down the field in a rainstorm. <laughs> <laughs> Different movie, though. <laughs> yes. So, some real skill. <laughs> That's yes. a skilled running back. <laughs> but my pick for badass in this season, the biggest badass, is Mark, Miami Connection, YK Kim. He's the only one. <laughs> <laughs> in that movie that knew karate. He's, he's basically holding up the whole movie for the karate section. <laughs> and you gotta give it to him 
to make it to spend a million dollars to leverage everything he has to make a movie that's an ad for his Taekwondo yeah. studios. <laughs> He's got balls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. He's the only one that didn't go to Taekwondo. He made sure everyone knows it. There's several scenes in that movie where he gets to show off his skills. He's the only one that actually fights anyone. Poor Jim. Poor Jim. And then Angelo, I'm drawing a blank. I think he's Tom in the movie. All they, all they are is punching bags that happen <laughs> to disappear whenever there's an extended fight scene. <laughs> Mark takes down full armies. That's his job. That's what he does, and he does it well. See, the only thing that bugs me about that is that at the end there, when they're killing all the ninjas, the white dude with the blood on his face, he almost looked more effective once we got to the murdering of the ninjas, you know? Don't listen to John. He's just sad because he was killed by Mark in the movie. (laughs) Kind of. I mean, I kind of fell on my own. (laughs) It was kind of more just me being clumsy. And my sister didn't even mourn me. Yes, she was like, it's okay, I understand. You had to kill him. <laughs> okay. Razor and everything. Jesus Christ. I think I'd be more mad if my boyfriend murdered my brother, but okay. <laughs> Melissa, who, who you got? Well, it was a hard decision, but I have to pick the one who's a magic virgin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Bruce Leroy from The Last Dragon, he is a magic virgin virgin (laughs) he had magic come out of his body when he was when he was i mean i i almost i almost had to pick the villain from the same movie because he's he's got magic too but and the best costumes but you know bruce bruce leroy he's he's a king he's a king in new york so yeah he's the biggest badass (laughs) and no one helped him either he didn't have any help no i mean you gotta be a badass if your girlfriend's vanity so a true story. And the, he and he doesn't understand yes. when she's trying to tell him she wants to have sex with him. He's like, I don't know. What? <laughs> <laughs> He's still enthralled by that Bruce Lee music video. He's like, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. That is Bruce Lee. And she's like, I know. I put it together for you, you moron. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to agree. I also chose Bruce Leroy from uh, Last Dragon, Time Mock, because he is a certified martial artist in real life, and he is mastered. I mean, he's mastered, which is something that not all of the people participating in this are. Not only is he mastered, he took down Shonuff, who could have also been one of the best villains, too. Like, he was a close close second for me when it came to villains, and he was also mastered. So, not only is Bruce Leroy mastered, but he took down a mastered villain, which not all of our contestants could say that, so. I think Shonuff could have easily been chosen as the biggest badass, mm-hmm. too. Like, mm-hmm. he's second in best villain and second in biggest badass, which makes him cumulatively probably the number one he's action star. He's the number star. one pick! <laughs> <laughs> of all! Yes! Yeah! I, I would watch more of Bruce Leroy movies. I'm disappointed they stopped at just the last dragon. Yeah, th- and having seen Ty Mock in person, he looks like he's good to go. Like he's ready to do this thing. So if, if we can get you know, enough, <laughs> come on, can we get a second to last dragon? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I mean, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> there's just there's so many options for badass. To the only one that was out was Jeff Wincott. But... Yeah, no, he's gone. <laughs> yeah, he was in the uh, also, I, I... no Chuck Norris either. No, ain't no one picking Chuck Norris with his high-waisted pants. <laughs> right to yeah. his nipples. Well, it's tough, too, because, like, <laughs> I, I, I would have considered him if he had admitted he was Walker, Texas Ranger in that movie, but since he's still pretending to be Lone McQuaid, <laughs> I just can't do it. He's like an action movie covered in fur. <laughs> <laughs> The other one that I was tempted on was Dawn the Dragon. Yeah, because he's a real he's a real mm-hmm. badass in real life. Just, Not in that movie. But yeah. you just watch him in movies and it, it doesn't he looks like David Carradine <laughs> when he's doing his stuff. And like, Nobody looks like me. a dinosaur like David. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a special award for most unbelievable action star, Dawn the Dragon. <laughs> Also, yeah. that he had, that he had sex scenes in there too. That that's not. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, uh, uh, uh. Is his karate worse than Mark's knife thing? <laughs> <laughs> we can all agree that nothing is worse than Mark's guitar playing. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even have strings. They're like, Mark, stop! We have to just cut the strings off. Cut him off. He doesn't know what he's doing. He keeps getting tangled in them. Just leave him. <laughs> 
So the biggest surprise, though, is that Melissa didn't pick JCBD for best villain and best badass. Because you're giving it away. I got We got to keep going. Oh, then let's get to it then. <laughs> What's the best Karate City? Now, remember, we said we chose the movies based on where they were located or where the action star was. And then at the end, we're going to debate the best Karate City. Mm -hmm. And so now this is it. This is the payoff for the entire season. Which city? It, you come to their city. You're... you're ass is grass we got you you ain't you can bring your karate here but you it's nothing compared to what we got and i think melissa i made her tip her hand a little bit here so melissa what's the biggest best karate city toronto frank dukes you are not gonna fight your way out of frank dukes because he's a big liar don't you? <laughs> <laughs> at least he okay. won't tell that tell the story that way <laughs> yeah exactly so i'm gonna defend this Bloodsport with Frank Dukes, whatever. Okay. He, in Bloodsport, he fights the best from around the world. Not the best people in Texas. Not the magic magician from New York. One guy. Not Seattle karate. <laughs> Five guys. He fights the best from around the world. Okay, so Blood Fist 2, but he got taken out by a mango. So, no. Not even a good fruit. Not even like a strawberry or something. <laughs> he fought the best and he won. End of story. And he did it while doing the splits and showing his ass. And that's the most important thing. Of See, nobody, ain't nobody else showed their ass in these movies. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, and that's it's where we differ because I had to go Blood Fist and Manila is the city that Blood Fist takes place in. That's where he meets Baby and that's where the, everything goes down. And so that's what I'm giving credit for. You can take Toronto, but Manila has their own, each dojo like had their own like army <laughs> training for this event. Everyone was color coded. We had had Billy Blanks, we had Chin Wu murdering contestants all for this Red <laughs> Fist tournament. Even Baby could have beat up some of the people from some of our other movies. And it's Baby, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm giving it to Don Dragon and Manila because they take it seriously over there in Manila. <laughs> All right, mine's got, mine is going to come from left field. And everyone is expecting me to choose Orlando. Because of Miami Connection. Not, sorry, <laughs> Orlando, because of Miami Connection. <laughs> but I'm picking Jacksonville. <laughs> hey, if, if Ashley Williams calls Jacksonville home, then so will I. No, oh, get out of here. <laughs> Ashy Slashy's in Jacksonville, I'm there. But I narrowed mine down to the very, very small city of France. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually just a cemetery. That's where he's from. And my choice for the for this is our choice for France. And I'm gonna confess my surprise love of Angel Town. I actually really, really like that movie. And now that I've had more time to think about it. We can't we can't do this anymore. We have to stop doing these podcasts. I, liked, I really liked the movie. I liked what it. What is wrong with you? Why would you like that movie? It was terrible. It was good. It was there okay, was, okay, so the, the action was good. Yeah, we can agree on that. <laughs> there was multiple points that were happening, like different story arcs are all happening at the same time, culminated in this big brawl in the city in East LA, had multiple gangs fighting each other, had lots of great story, had hit all the tropes that, that we love, where it talks be good friends, do the right thing. Um, <laughs> hey, Jacques comes to save his friends, even though he just met them. I mean... At the expense of his other friends who already live in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, yeah. who, who gets his gym blown up because of it. I mean, I'll give you that. It's the most murders in one of the movies we've watched. He murders everybody. <laughs> Yeah. But the reason why I chose France <laughs> is because Jacques, apparently he goes all over the world and does this. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> he did it in France. He did it in Hong Kong. And now he did it in LA. And he's about to go fuck up your city, too. <laughs> <laughs> he's on his way. <laughs> I mean, he is special forces, though. Mm -hmm. Right? He's special yeah, forces. and a real life badass, too. Well, he's not a real life actor, mm -hmm. so that's good for him. <laughs> <laughs> And based how excited Henry's wife was to see him, apparently he's got a little something, you know. I think it was a three-way. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
So our choices are <laughs> Toronto, Manila, France. Notice there's no U.S. cities in there. We didn't choose any U.S. of the U.S. cities. I almost chose New York because of Show Nuff and his gang. Because like I thought that was equal tough competition. So, but I, it just it just doesn't measure up to Billy Blake's and that look or Chin Wu and murdering guys in the mat. <laughs> so. There's lots of stuff that I learned through this season, too, about these kinds of karate movies because it was really interesting watching them so close together. Sometimes we go big gaps. You watch, you get in a streak, you watch some different type of movie, right? Military or spy or Navy mm. SEAL for zombies. <laughs> yeah, Navy SEAL for zombies is the thing <laughs> we watched recently. <laughs> you Apparently, you find that movie after you try to watch a movie about a pandemic and decide it's too close to home. One of us did, anyway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but. What there's some things that I didn't expect to find during the season. One, that there were so many people in the 80s that were really good at karate, and a studio came to them and said, We don't care about you being an actor, you just go to karate, we're gonna put you in a movie. And they that was good enough to put them in the movie. Just the simple fact that they were good at whatever their fighting skill. It, it was good enough to get Don the Dragon like eight blood fist movies. <laughs> The second thing I learned that it's all about the jaunty hats. <laughs> Every karate movie's got to have the jaunty hats. Hey, there's no jaunty hats in Bloodsport. I'm trying to think about the. Oh, Unless we're talking, we're thinking about it, like um, his friend wearing the bandana. Buddy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he doesn't wear a hat. Oh, he wears a baseball cap. Yeah, sorry, I can't picture JCVD in a baseball cap though. <laughs> I don't know. I also think that there's a theme with this whole rooftop thing. Everyone's yes. got to go hang out and work out on rooftops. Yeah, dance, have sex, but like like murder each other up there, do all kinds of wacky things. <laughs> What's wrong with the ground floor, people? It's <laughs> a lot of stairs. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Does everyone's building have roof access? Like, what yeah. the hell? Rich people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you have. You, there's only two ways you have roof access. If you're really rich or you're really poor. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> you're yes. in the middle. No, no roof access for nope. you. <laughs> no, you got to climb out a window and do some some climbing. <laughs> the third thing that I learned is that the music needs to be very, very specific about the scenes that it's in. Like <laughs> oddly specific about what's happening in that moment. Because it wasn't just Miami Connection. That was the thing. That was in every karate movie. It's like, oh, man, we're going to have like even in Bloodsport. I was right? going to say, yeah. He gets in that tram and the sand bush music is... You're so sad I'm sitting on the tram. Yeah, thinking about the last Far from home. <laughs> the uh, soundtracks for these movies, they didn't spend a lot of money on them. <laughs> so actually, they were kind of crappy, but. <laughs> it might explain why all the songs are just written about what's going on in the plot. <laughs> Here, just sing this. <laughs> Okay, but we have to admit that Bloodsport has the best soundtrack because it's got Dan Bush on it. <laughs> Nobody beats Dan Bush. <laughs> I mean, he didn't think about cocaine and fighting the ninjas in the middle of the night, but... <laughs> yeah, he's fine. <laughs> you gotta get with the times here, Melissa. Ninjas are gonna steal all your cocaine. <laughs> hey, it could be like the music from Will and Wolf, which is like... Whoa! <laughs> 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 we did not talk about Lil Wolf at all. <laughs> it got picked for nothing. <laughs> you would just leave Ben got a choice. Lil Wolf got nothing. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, in, in reality, The Last Dragon has the best soundtrack. Oh, I because forgot. Because it's... it's got like real, actual, real music on it. <laughs> it's got like, actually Debarge real music in it. Yes. It's hands down Last Dragon best soundtrack. And there's so many other themes from this season for the. Like, Telltale, it's going to be a karate movie. You've got to have one or two or three of these things that are in it. And I really enjoyed picking out the karate. And and because of how we chose the season, we picked movies that were way off the beaten path, mm -hmm. too. So these weren't just... Like the karate kid or like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went way yeah. out there with some of these movies. Including Deadly Bet, which wasn't available anywhere. We had to watch it on YouTube. Including Angel Town. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> you, you see what we do for you people. Yeah, we had to watch Angel Town for you. <laughs> <laughs> he had a terrible haircut. He was a terrible actor. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our roundup on season two of the movie 
podcast. We've made our choices. We would love to hear from you on these choices. What are your picks? Best sidekick, best villain, biggest badass, best karate city of these movies, these eight movies that we chose for the season. We would love to hear from you and what your choices are. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. Get us on Facebook, get us on Twitter, get us on Instagram. Let us know what your picks are because I would love to see those. I'd love to see in particular, uh-huh. I think there's lots of debate about the badass one because there's so many people who have their nine time world champion this. and mm-hmm. There's a lot of qualified applicants for that one. Uh, <laughs> same thing with yeah. the Karate City, like I'm, I, I'd be really interested to see what people think because it was so close between like, like I could, I could have went Last Dragon with New York, you know, or we could have gone like Dom, like you were saying with Miami Connection, where we're biker ninjas, you know. <laughs> so like, there was a, there, there were some good options there, you know, and I'm sure we're gonna hear some people give us crap about Lone Wolf McQuaid, so. <laughs> Because, I mean, it's not every day that Kung Fu fights Walker, Texas Ranger. <laughs> so we would love to hear from you. Please email us, goldtoheat at gmail.com. So this is the end of the season. And so we're going to take an extended break, too. Now, a little behind the scenes here. I know we've talked about it a few times as we've gone throughout the season. COVID, I got laid off. We moved across the country. John bought a house. He had to do a move. There's been a lot of stuff that's been going on. Obviously, just the pandemic and life in the pandemic has been a challenge in q4 for this house we have four birthdays plus thanksgiving christmas and new year's it is a very very busy time for us and so we're really looking forward to how this worked out that we started in the spring went through spring summer fall and then take the holiday season off now that being said we do plan on coming back for a couple holiday specials so be sure to keep subscribed to this feed and we're going to work on a Thanksgiving episode and a Christmas episode, maybe even a Valentine's Day episode. Mm, a little spicy <laughs> episode. I'm telling you, we're going to get some Kiss Save Santa. <laughs> <laughs> so keep subscribed to the feed. We will pop in a couple times here throughout the holidays with a couple special editions of the podcast just to pop in and have some fun around the holidays. We are looking forward to taking our break, but man, we have so much fun doing this. So we'll come do the special editions for the holidays with our holiday specials. And then we will begin planning our next season, which will come out sometime at the end of February, early March, 2021, which is weird to say that out loud. February, Mm -hmm. March, 2021. We will be back with our next season. We'll pick a theme in the movies. We'll do exactly like what we did this time, just something totally different. And then we'll be back on in the regular cadence of every other week. But we're looking forward to this extended time off with time with friends and family through the holidays. Do a little special episodes for the holidays. See how many times we could get people punched in a special episode <laughs> for Christmas. How many times can we punch Santa? How many times? <laughs> and then we'll be back next year with our new season. We have lots and lots of ideas on where that could go. And we, you know, we might be playing around with some ideas on how to make this more modern, too. Maybe we get out of the 80s, which might be a controversial decision <laughs> <laughs> with some of the people who listen to the show. They were like, oh, the 80s are great. I love the 80s. I do. I love it. But you can't beat late 90s, early 2000s CGI. And there's so much bad stuff that happens in that era. Yeah, and if we if we just stay in the 80s, we'll never get to the Nick Cage Con Airs. Um, oh, yeah, exactly. Know, or the Steve Austin, the Condemned. Like, don't you oh want God. don't you want Steve Austin running around an island killing convicts? Because I do. <laughs> Brian Bosworth made more than one movie. They're out there. We can they are, go we're going to find them. <laughs> So we'd love to hear from you. Email us, goldie to gmail.com. Let us know some ideas on what we could do for the next season. So we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear from you on these four topics that we did for this season. So please, please, please email us, goldie to gmail.com. Go to that website, goldtheheat.com. You can find all the ways to contact us, all the ways to subscribe, all the ways to support us. As we take this extended break, we'd love to see your support. First thing that you can do to support us, go leave us a review. Go to your podcast, your platform of choice. Go leave us a review. Just leave us five stars. No one's going to know I told you to give us five stars. And then in the review, try to justify why we should have chose something from Lone Wolf McQuaid. Please tell us why (laughs) you've been the villain, badass, or sidekick could have been chosen for the best season in your review. Please, someone choose David Carradine. Justify yourself. (laughs) (laughs) 
support step number two. Hey, we'll take your money. You can send us money. <laughs> Just saying, you can go to that website. You can send us money. I think we've got some stickers somewhere. We'll send you stuff back. Speaking of which, we do have stickers. So if you're interested, 100% free. If you are interested in getting a pack of stickers, email us. Go to you gmail.com and let us know that you're interested it's 100 percent free i will just mail them to you we have some some packs left over and i'd love to send them to you so if you want them we had done them for our patreon before and now that that's run its course i just would love to send them out to some people so if you're interested in getting a sticker pack email me let me know that you're interested and i will respond to that we'll work out the details on the address and where i can send it to 100 percent free no charge just let me know you're interested and i will send you out a pack it's from the Miami Vice days, so you get some classic ones, including Izzy's sidekick, we're still, who we're still looking for. He's out there somewhere. <laughs> yes. He's probably out there with JW Fails. <laughs> yes. So that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We will see you next year. Bye, pals.